Hi everyone, Kelly here with The Siren and the Pirate, Jewelry for the Adventurer, coming at you with another tutorial. And today we are making earrings. We're making little uh, post or stud type of earrings. So this will be the first design that I show you. These are really um, fun, easy little earrings, also great for filler earrings um, if you have a booth. And then I'll show you a variation where you can connect um, beads. You could do a lot with this design. You don't have to do exactly what I do, but it'll just show you how to create um, the swirl with the post and the loop, and then you can attach whatever you want to the stud. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna show you uh, this one and also this one. And then the next tutorial will be based off of um, this one, but it will include a little cuff and post earring. So that one will be released uh, shortly after this one. So let's get started. To make these swirly studs, I'm using 20 gauge copper wire. I get mine from Rio Grande and this is dead soft, but of course you could probably use um, half hard, hard wire. Uh, that would probably even be better for an earring. I'm going to show you how to work harden um, the back of these so that they're not so soft. Um, and we will need to start with about five inches of wire. I'm going to get mine cut here. If you're working with a more expensive wire, say like sterling or gold, um, you could probably get away with using just four inches. I'm going to use five because it's just a little bit easier to handle. Uh, with the extra inch on there. I do end up with some scrap wire though. Okay, so to make two earrings, two pieces, each five inches in length. Um, I also am using these flat nose plier and a lot of people ask me where I got them and I finally found my order link to them. I got them off of Amazon so I will link that in the description. Also my cutting tool, also my kind of needle nose flat nose pliers. I really like all three of these. I don't remember them being that expensive and again I should have the Amazon links to all of these tools down below. All right, to start, we're gonna start actually with the post and from the very end, come in about one centimeter and grab it with some flat nose pliers or whatever pliers you have on hand to work with. And then we're gonna bend this up 90 degrees. Just like that. And now I'm gonna to switch to my round nose pliers these were nothing special. Um, I got this tool plus another pliers and another cutting tool in a pack of three. That was It was not expensive, but they do their job and they've held up for a long time, so I just keep using it. All right, now I'm going to turn the wire and I'm going to grab right at that 90 degree angle. The very tip of the pliers and if you can you can use your index finger to kind of hold this in place and then let's see if I can got enough space to work here tilt this there we go I'm gonna start to wrap this wire around the very tip of the pliers take it out so you can see just like that okay now I might reposition this again and this is going to go back to um, if you don't have any experience making spirals I have a whole video dedicated to helping you learn how to make spirals and learn different variations of them they can be tricky so if you're having trouble with this um, also check out that video it's down below in the description box as well. All right, so I'm gonna reposition to grab so I can continue to rotate 
this wire around. Now I can only get so far. Um, oops, sorry for bumping the camera. I can only get so far um, with my spiral here because I can only grip it from the middle if I have only one layer to hang on to. But the minute I get two, if I try to do that same thing and I squeeze, it's going to end up squishing all of the wires and overlapping them. So at this point, I'm kind of done. I could probably go a little bit further around. Okay, and then another option here is to use a pair of pliers. I like to use these little guys to find an edge to squeeze and hold on to, flat like a pancake. And then you can just start grabbing and then pulling this wire around. You wanna try not to use this hand that's um, holding the pliers to move because you're gonna end up marring your wire. So this hand just stabilizes while I pull this one around. And I'm just releasing and adjusting as I go around. Now I'm still, because my pliers are kind of old and I can see that they're already marring up the wire a little bit, which I don't really mind. I also have a lot of tools and um, ways to buff out all of the scratches and I'll go through some of those with you after we're done here. All right, now you get to pick how large of an earring you want. Okay, I kind of like the size of that. So let's turn it over to the back. So you'll notice on the back side, wherever you made that post, it's not directly in the center, right? So whatever side it's on, that's my top, and this is my bottom side. So whenever you get to the top and whenever you want to, actually, I'm gonna go around just one more time, why not? Carolyn. Okay, so I'm come back around to the top with my wire. This is the top because the post is closest to this side. And I'm going to allow that wire to drop behind my spiral and come down to one side of the post. Now from here, this might be hard to grip, so I'm gonna use my pliers to hang on to it, and I'm gonna wrap that wire around the post. So you can see how it's secured and then I'm going to go in with my cutting tool, trim it off right there. And then I always like to go in and just give it another little squeeze. And voila. You have a post. So the rule of thumb with earrings is whatever you do on one earring, you immediately do on the other. Well, these really don't take much time to do, so I typically do a full one of these before I do the other one. What you would have to make sure you do is you wanna get the hole the right size. So if you're using your round nose pliers, they taper, so you wanna make sure you place the wire exactly where you did on the last one 
on the pliers. And you wanna make sure you count how many rings you did so you get them the same size. Okay, so let's go ahead and make, actually before, I won't even make the other one on camera. That's probably not necessary. I'll do that off camera. But let's talk about um, work hardening the post. So typically to work harden, hammering is a good option, but of course we don't wanna hammer this because we want it to stay round and 20 gauge. Normally people can fit a 20 gauge wire um, into their ear if they have pierced ears. So I like to use 20 gauge. Anything uh, thicker than that, not everybody can get that large of a post um, into their ear. So unless you know for sure, 20 gauge is um, fairly common and will probably work for everybody. So I don't know if you heard that, the dogs are fighting in the background. Sorry, it's a brawl here. All right, so to work harden it, I'm gonna grab the post and I'm just gonna kind of twist, grab and twist, being careful not to misshape it. <laughs> just a little twist, twist, twist. And that should help work harden it a bit. Now, if you want to use like a, an actual back, I don't have any actual backs in copper, but I do have, where'd they go? I do have these. I think I just ordered a bag off of Amazon a long time ago, so I've had these forever. These are just little um, plastic backs that you can pair with your earrings to make sure that they don't fall off. But you can always just use these. So if you don't have the, the metal backings, that's a good option. Um, let's also talk, it's very important, I think, to make sure that the post isn't jagged. So when I just do a rough cut, if you try to go put this in your ear, it's not soft and it, it's really gonna catch and kind of scrape along. It's, it's not gonna feel comfortable. So we are going to make this soft and smooth. <laughs> okay, a few different options. You could use a handheld file or you could use sandpaper. I got different grits here. This first one is 400, which is really um, coarse. And then I have 600 and then I have a really fine one, which is 1200. Um, so if I was just using the sandpaper, I might go in and just kind of work the top of it and around the sides. <laughs> um, maybe go down to the finer ones too. So you, you could do that, just kind of smooth the very tip of it. That's already a lot better. Um, or there are specific burrs out there. Like if you have a rotary tool, maybe not all of them even require a rotary, rotary tool. You might be able just to put the burr on and turn it and it will uh, smooth out the very tip of your wire. I have, uh, what are they called? They're, hmm, it's a smoothing tool and I just lost the word I was looking for. Hmm. Okay, wow, I'm sorry, I completely forgot the word of these. Um, I tell you what, I bet once I finish filming and I go to editing, I'll remember. So maybe I'll write it right here or I'll put it down in the description. Anyways, for my flex shaft, I would put this on my rotary tool and it's going to spin and then I can go over the edges of anything to really smooth it out. Um, and there's different um, grits in all of these types. What are they called? Oh, silicone. I think, I think there's, oh, maybe. I can't remember, let's call them uh, silicone, maybe. <laughs> Whatever. Um, that's also great tools to use. Uh, so if you have any uh, marring or uh, chips, you can use your sandpaper, you can use these tools. 
and it'll take out all of those little little marks okay all right so there you have nice easy little swirl studs um you can patina them of course they would look really nice in silver or whatever wire that you want to use colored wire would be really fun i have these really nice little um uh, earring stud cards that i use um, for my booths i have my instagram and my website on the back and um, if you put them in high enough you can just set them like that so they're easy to see um, cards like this make your jewelry look really nice and these i think these would just be really great filler pieces for your booth so hope you enjoyed those let's go ahead on to the next design where we'll partially be kind of using the same thing but adding a little loop at the bottom so you can connect whatever you want to them all right, same thing, you'll need two pieces. I'm working with the same gauge of wire. And I'm gonna also use five inches. This one, I make these um, a little bit smaller. You can make them whatever size you want. So if you want them about this same size, use about four or five inches of 20 gauge wire. If you want them larger, I would say use uh, six to seven inches or however much you want. Oh, I just thought this would be really cool as like a really big spiral stud. <laughs> Neat. All right, we are gonna do the same thing. So same process, about a centimeter or more if you think you need a bigger post you can always trim the post down later on if you need to same process bend at that one centimeter mark to 90 degrees grab your round nose pliers let's start to rotate around until I get to about here. Oops. And then keep it going around. until I get to the top. So I've basically done one, two, and then on my third one coming around, I'm gonna tuck it behind. And wrap it around the post like I did before. And if I can't hold on to it, use your pliers. All right, and then it's gonna go straight down the back side. And because I'm gonna be making a loop at the bottom, I'm gonna bring this, um, if this is six o'clock, I'm gonna bring it over to like seven o'clock. Okay, and now I'm gonna switch back over to my round nose pliers. And whatever size of loop you need, I'm gonna keep mine fairly small. 
Um, give yourself a little space between the spiral and the bottom and grab a hold. And then you're gonna go back towards the six o'clock and around. Like that. And I'm gonna flip it over and grab. Actually, let me pinch this together because it got a little spaced out. And now you could just trim it there, um, but if you want it to be more secure, or you could attach whatever you need to first before you do this next part, but I'm gonna go ahead and wrap that wire around. The back. And then cut off the tail. So what I started with five inches and I ended up with about an inch and a half of scrap wire. For those of you who don't wanna to have too much scrap wire, so maybe start with just uh, four inches of wire. Uh, but there we go. Now, I have a little post, it's nice and secure, and I can connect anything I want to the bottom of it. Okay, and then just remember all the things we did before. If you feel like the post is too long, if you need to, you can trim it off. Um, make sure that you smooth the end um, what else? Work harden the post by twisting. Careful not to ruin your airing in the process. And then as far as the little danglies go, if you're wanting to know how I made mine, it's actually pretty simple. Again, you can put whatever you want on the bottom of this. Um, I just chose three beads and let's see, I'll grab a little piece of wire here to show you one. You're basically going to make a head pin if you're using beads like these. Um, so I'm going to take the very tip of the wire and curl it like so. I'm going to go back into the center with one side, pinch, and then put a, oops, sorry, not in focus, counter bend in it so it's more centered. And then I'm going to go in and just give it another little squish. If you want that long shape. If you want to keep it open, you could connect more and more and have really long dangly earrings. Okay, so I've got that and then I'm going to put my beads on. Once I have them on, I'm going to put a loop at the top. I'm going to do that by doing. <laughs> sorry. Okay, sorry. I keep pausing this because my little alarm system, aka the dogs, keep going off whenever something moves or breathes outside. So I've got uh, my three pieces on. I'm going to put a little counter bend at the top. And then take it around my pliers. However large you want the hole to be, or the loop to be. And okay, so if you 
wanted to attach it right now and then have it really secure, you could put it on like this, hold on. Oh, Pete's sake. For Pete's sake. There we go. Get it in. Okay. Once you had it on, then you could grab a hold of this and wrap it around. And that would be very secure. If you don't care how secure it is, you don't think that they'll really get tugged on. You can just trim. Like so. And then you can just open it by twisting. And putting it back on. Okay. Ah, my hands don't work today. All right. So there you go. Uh, and then of course, depending on what you're hanging, if you need the loop to be this way or front to back, you can just make it differently. Or once you've made it, you can just twist. So it's like that. Okay. All right. Okay, there you have it. Little swirl stud earrings. I will probably patina and polish all of these um, and then also probably make some in sterling silver. So again, like I said, great fillers and you can hang whatever you want off of these. So leave uh, questions, comments down below. Um, also, I really would love to see what else you come up with to um, at least use like the post and initial design and then send your photos um, my way. You can tag me on Instagram, on Facebook, and I can um, view them there. So thank you so much for watching and stay tuned because the next tutorial coming out very soon, we will use the same swirl stud and make it into this little like cuff earring. I'll see you next time, thanks.